Can you read to me the nameplate? Judge Ebony K. Williams. So the only thing that matters in this particular courtroom is how I see it. I am from North Carolina by way of Louisiana with some West Coast cool and a New York edge. Do we have a problem, ma'am? No, I don't, Your Honor. Equal justice is all about the most important values of our country, freedom, integrity, and those are the things that I'm striving for. Ma'am, you run your household, this man gets to run his. I decided to become an attorney and pursue the law. I wanted to be a voice for the voiceless. This court cannot hold this woman accountable. People from all sectors of life, black, white, purple, gay, straight, queer, and that's what Equal Justice with Judge Ebony K. Williams is all about. Destiny Delgado claims her VIP club celebration was cut short when her friends started a fight, which got them kicked out. Kirsten Hank says they lost their table because her so-called bestie didn't have her back. What have we here? Uh, plaintiff Destiny Delgado and yes. defendant, uh, who is this, Kirsten Hanks? Yes. Okay. Uh, Ms. Delgado, why are we here today? Because one night while we were at a club, my ex-best friend got into a fight with someone at the bar and got us kicked out and I paid $600 just for us to have a good time and she got us kicked out for, we were only there for like an hour and a half. I just wanted to have a good time. Y'all got some real stank energy towards each other. Okay, uh, let, let me hear from you, uh, Ms. Hanks. What, what's going on here? Why are you in court today? I'm in court today because my best friend or my ex-best friend blames me for an altercation at the club that was not my fault. Mm -hmm. And I believe that she should be able to take my side because she said that she was my friend. At that time? At that time. So and when she did y'all fall out? Let's go to the nitty gritty. When did you two fall out? You, you answer, Ms. Delgado, first, and then I'll hear from you, Ms. Hanks. So we were friends. Okay. Um, were y'all work friends or were y'all friend friends? No, we were friends. We were friends. We met in college okay. and we were on the same dance team and we okay. hit it off and stuff like that. So okay, great. We, we were really friends. But she had moved to North Carolina and then okay. she moved back after like a few years mm -hmm. and I was so excited and then a couple months later I got this promotion and I wanted to celebrate so I invited her to go out to this club with me and, and we were going to have a good time. I invited okay. four other friends and so we went to this club, we got there, we hung out, we got to the VIP, we had okay. a couple drinks and then... And how did y'all get into VIP, Ms. Delgado? I paid for it. I paid $600. Oh, you, paid, you bought a table, like yes. a situation. Yes, so okay. I paid $600 for the three bottles, we got the table. And then we got there and we had a couple drinks for a little bit. I After bet. about like 30 minutes, I wanted to go dance. Like my favorite song was on. I was okay. like, okay, let's go. And she wanted to stay at the table. Her okay. feet were hurting. So I was like, okay. So me and two other friends went to the dance floor. Mm -hmm. And then two other friends went to the bathroom. And we were dancing. We were having a good time. Mm -hmm. And then after a little bit, I noticed that at our table there was like a bunch of commotion happening so hmm. I was like what's happening I went back to the table and she was being escorted out and I was like what happened what what and the security guard asked me and he's like um, are you with her yes. and I said well yeah and he escorts me out too and so hmm. we get outside and I'm like what happened like so she gets in this argument with this guy and she gets us kicked out and I just paid six hundred dollars for this VIP for us to have a good time hmm. and she gets us kicked out, and we were only there for an hour and a half. So what came with the VIP, Ms. Delgado? I, normally it's like a, like a section of the tables and some seating so she could sit and rest her feet, which I understand. I've been there before. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you had some bottles, or what was that? Yeah, we, we ordered three bottles. We got our whole table to ourselves. Okay. We got to have a couple friends, which we had. There was six of us total. Okay. And we got to dance the whole night. We so by the time, and you got kicked out, you said, after an hour? Yeah, it was about like an hour and a half. Okay. We and where, if long. you had to... I'm going to use this gavel to be a, a bottle of liquor right now. If you had to tell me how much liquor was consumed in the hour, was it this much liquor? About this much liquor? About that so much. So about half yeah. of all three bottles, would you say? Mm -hmm. Okay, so about half of the alcohol was consumed, but half remained after right. you guys were kicked out. Okay, now, Miss Hanks, let's get your take on this. Yeah. What led to the commotion for you to even get kicked out in the first place? So what happened was, is they went off, they went to go kick it, they, you know, did whatever, and I wanted to sit at VIP because my little pinky toe was, she was on fire. Okay. I shouldn't have been wearing them shoes. What kind of shoes were you wearing, Miss Hanks? Ooh, 
Ooh, them stiletto, you know, the stiletto thigh highs. Oh, I mean, okay. I was cute, but yeah. you know, you can't really. You were giving it to the people. Okay. I was giving it to the people. Okay. I was serving it. Okay, you were but serving it. But I had to serve it from a seat. Okay, I understand. And I was sitting there just sipping on something. Okay. And this guy comes up, this dusty comes through. And he Not sits himself down in our you section. You heard that, Mr. Bailey? Uh, a dusty. Never heard of a dusty. Well, you heard of one today, huh? Yeah. Sprinkle, yeah. sprinkle. Yeah. The dusty came. So he comes through. Mm -hmm. He sits down with his little his little well drink, and I ask him. I tell him politely at first, like, "Could you please remove yourself from this section?" My because friend he wasn't a part of y'all's VIP section. He didn't have a wristband on, okay. and like I said, dusty. He was a dusty, and he looked like a dusty. Sprinkle, sprinkle, yeah. and I've seen a couple in my day. So and when I asked years. him yeah. to remove himself, mm -hmm. he put his hand up in my face. Oh no. So I now, did proceeded. he touch you or he just? He tried to touch me after the bouncer came. Okay, so then the bouncer comes and the, then what happens? The security comes and security blames me. Security blames me for now, what's why happening. Why would they do that? Miss Hanks? I have no clue. Coming up on Equal Justice. The bouncer comes and then what happens? So I removed this man's hand from my face. Okay. Did you do it like all of that? Oh, uh, we. We did a little, it was probably a little bit more forceful okay. than maybe what I should have been. Okay, okay. And later. But when I met Desi, she was like a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. She was fun, outgoing. I see why. She looks, you know, she's very kind of radiant. There's something a little exuberant about her. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. This is Equal Justice. Equal Justice is back with the case of Destiny Delgado, who blames Kirsten Hanks for ruining her VIP celebration. Continue, the bouncer comes and then what happens? So I removed this man's hand from my face. Okay. Did you do it like all of that? Oh, uh, we, we did a little, it was probably a little bit more forceful okay. than maybe what I should have been. Okay, okay. So I removed a man's hand from my face. Okay. And then he's proceeding to still get, get up in my face, okay. still proceeding to talk to me crazy. What's the bouncer doing at this point? Um, the bouncer's just kind of standing there. Okay. He's not removing the man. Mm -hmm. He's not really doing anything. He's allowing he's just, this man to be forceful He's allowing this face. man to continue to be disrespectful to me. Give me the size proportions of this man, Miss Hanks. How tall? I mean, I think he was, he was a big dude. He was maybe like six foot two. Six feet, okay. Like, you know, a little, little linebacker build. Okay, so I was going to say football you know. build. So did you feel threatened or intimidated? I felt that he was threatening me. Okay. Uh, and at what point were you removed and also was the man removed also from VIP? Were all of y'all kicked out? We were all kicked out. Me and our friends were kicked and out. And the Dusty. And the Dusty. Okay. I don't know what happened to the Dusty the after so -called we left. The so-called Dusty. Okay. <laughs> the alleged Dusty. Okay. I don't know what happened to the Dusty after we left. Okay. But y'all were all escorted away, including you, Ms. Delgado, yes. which is what your claim is. Yes. Do any one of y'all have any evidence for the court to see in terms of corroborating these allegations, what the cost of the event? Yes. Do yes. You? Yes, I have. Okay. Please pre present that to my bailiff. This is the I'll just take all of your evidence. Okay. To it. Yeah, give us everything, Ms. Delgado. Awesome, thank you. Here you go, yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, so this is to you, uh, High Destiny. Your VIP table is confirmed uh, for an 11 p.m. reservation, as you said. Oh, this is the amount. Okay, yeah. so I'm seeing Destiny Delgado. I'm seeing, oh, here are the three bottles. Uh, 125, 150, 150, subtotaling 546.14. So you want a full refund of the entire expense of the bottle service? Yes. Okay, and what are these text messages you, you've sent to me here? So the day after, I texted her and I just wanted to let her know, like, I, I want to be refunded. I want the full $600 amount because you, I wanted to have this good time with you and you wasted it by getting us kicked out. When y'all got kicked out of the club, uh, were y'all friends still? Would you, would you say and then I'm going to let you answer? Well, kind of. I mean, but, but you were upset. Yes, I was upset. Okay. I, I told her, I was like, what? I asked her what happened and all this other stuff, and I tried to accommodate with her even before that. Like, now, were you genuinely open to her side? Yeah. Were you willing to see her as a victim? <gasps> uh, Miss Hanks, <laughs> relax. Were you willing to see her as a victim? I did. I understood what, what, what happened and everything like that, but I also thought that she should have just taken it to security. She okay. shouldn't have. Okay, I understand that perspective, but we're going to. Now, Miss Hanks, when y'all were kicked out, were, did you see this woman as your friend? I felt like she wasn't acting like she was my friend. Okay. Um, so let me go through these text messages. This is uh, Destiny talking to you, uh, 
Kirsten, I understand things were heated, but we need to talk. That's you opening up conversation, I, I see. Destiny, uh, you yelled in my face and didn't believe me about the fight, so you, you felt not heard, fair? Yeah. Okay. You, uh, Ms. Delgado, I do believe you. She says she does believe you. Uh, you were wrong. Mm. You ruined my whole night. Um, I lost out of $600 because of you, and this was a celebration of your new job promotion? Yes. Okay. Uh, you, in defense, a grown man was in my face. Ms. Delgado, uh, you are to play security. Uh, that's his response when, oh, when you agitate someone. So this is, this is you, you know, uh, I, I think it's fair to say you were, you were placing blame on Ms. Hanks here. Uh, you wanted to play security and that's his response. Okay, I don't owe you anything. Stop contacting me about this. And have you two spoken since this text message uh, exchange? Nope. No. No. Uh, so that's what brings you into the court today. Okay, I, I've heard enough, ladies. I'm a big proponent of sisterhood and I'm a big proponent of friendship. In fact, for some of us, friends become family. And if indeed you two have known each other and been close friends and girlfriends to each other since undergraduate days, uh, it's a shame to see it come down like this, to be honest with you. Yet, here we find ourselves. Uh, I appreciate your candor, Ms. Hanks, and acknowledging that you went a little off the rails. I also appreciate that you likely did feel threatened. At the same time, when you're upset, you're upset, and sometimes you have to call a thing a thing. So, Ms. Delgado, you indicated that y'all had drank about half of each of the three bottles. So, you are asking for a full $600, the full expenses. This court will award you half of that. This court is going, Ms. Hanks, this court is going to rule in favor of the plaintiff uh, for half of the amount asked, $300 to compensate you for your losses. I understand you are upset, Ms. Hanks, but you have got to do a better job of controlling your emotions when you are in mixed company. If you were by yourself and wanted to have a consequence that only affected you, so be it. When your consequences have an impact on others around you who have invested money, you have to be responsible. The court fines for the plaintiff in the amount of $300. That's the verdict. All rise. Judge Ebony has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $300. I hope that we can get past this and be friends again, because I do miss you. I'm sorry I came to this. I'll send you your money. Coming up on Equal Justice. I came home, which I never do in the middle of the day on a Wednesday, and I found a bunch of people in my house. I thought they were rummaging through stuff. Hmm. Turned out they were cleaning. Which is what she was supposed to be doing. Oh! This is Equal Justice. Widower Arthur Rivera claims he had to call off his wedding when he discovered his fiance was a fake. Desi Lewis says she did nothing wrong by outsourcing some household duties since she's not a maid. Okay, I see I've got Arthur Rivera here as the plaintiff and Desi Lewis as my defendant. Mr. Rivera, tell me why you're in my courtroom today. Well, I'm here today because I'm suing my ex-fiance for $3,200 because of a non-refundable deposit on a wedding venue we were supposed to get married at because it turned out that our relationship was nothing but a facade, mm. a lie, she's a thief, and Ooh. just can't trust her. Wow. Uh, those are some very weighty allegations just there. The, just the truth. Just, just the, the truth. truth. Okay, well, we'll I'll, I'll be the judge of that, actually. But here's where we're going to start. Talk to me about why y'all are not married specifically. I met her a year ago, okay. and I had been widowed for a couple of years. Uh, I'm sorry about your loss, by the way. Go ahead. Yeah, it was tough. Yeah. But when I met her, my wife, my late wife, yes. had always wanted me to move on. Sure. She, she knew she had cancer at the time. Oh. She wanted me to move on, find somebody else, but it wasn't easy. But when I met Desi, she was like a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. She was fun, outgoing. I see why. She looks, you know, she's very kind of radiant. There's something a little exuberant about her. Okay. Yeah, I pretty and smart. Mm -hmm. I thought she was smart. I thought she was trustworthy. Mm -hmm. okay. So <laughs> when we started hanging out, we talked about what we wanted out of life and what I wanted out of the rest of my life. Yes. And for me, it was planning for the future. It was having a home cooked meal because I eat out so much, mm -hmm. you know, being alone. And also to try to save money up for the future. Coming up on Equal Justice. And then when I found all those receipts for food and cleaning that goes back eight months, I just happened to find her car bill. And it was $395. Oh. She was charging me $135 more than she actually needed. Oh. 
This is Equal Justice. Equal Justice is back with the case of Arthur Rivera, who brought his ex fiance Desi Lewis, to court over a wedding venue deposit. Now, how long did you and uh, Desi here date before you proposed? Well, when we first started dating, she made it very clear that I needed to put a ring on it within six months. And then we planned the wedding for the end of the year. Great. The deposit went in, but it was non-refundable if you were within 60 days of the wedding date, 45 days before our wedding date. I came home, which I never do in the middle of the day on a Wednesday, and I found a bunch of people in my house. I thought they were rummaging through stuff. Hmm. Turned out they were cleaning, which is what she was supposed to be doing. Oh, so, okay. So she's cl they're cleaning. I call her and I say, hey, where are you at? She says, I'm home cleaning. And I just looked around dumbfounded like she's lying to me. Okay. So I called her out on that. She said it was the only time, I swear, I talked to the cleaning chief, mm -hmm. the lady in charge. She said that she's been going there for six months. Oh, Lie wow. number two. So I got curious. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, intuition thought, okay, I started looking through. I got receipts to prove it. Started looking Go through Go ahead it. and give that to my baby. Okay. Let's see. So there's receipts here for cleaning services mm -hmm. that go back eight months. I'll take those. From the very beginning when she said she was going to start cleaning my place. Ooh, okay, thank you. And believe me, by no means did I want a maid. Okay, now I don't know about by no means you didn't want a maid because it certainly looks like this is part of the bargain, right? Uh, and that's okay. No judgment on that part yet. I'll do the judging later. But there was a transaction of sorts that you were bartering for. Is that fair yeah, to say? Absolutely. You decided instead of you cleaning the house yourself and you cooking and doing this work yourself that you were going to outsource, including the meals, because I also saw receipts here for takeout. Yeah, well, Your Honor, I understood that Arthur wanted um, in exchange for providing for a family, he wanted his house to be taken care of. I have no problem with that. We agreed on that. Right. I would be responsible to keep the house in order and mm -hmm. to keep food on the table, prepare it for him when he came home. That's exactly what I did. His <coughs> house was, it was a big job and I, I couldn't do it by myself. So yes, I needed to call in some help. Judge Ebony's verdict when Equal Justice returns. This is Equal Justice. Now, you're acknowledging that he held up his end of the bargain for providing. Yes. Do you think you did your part by the nurturing? I believe I did. You know, we I, were I, very happy. I, <laughs> I, have, I have to interrupt this. I have, I have to interrupt this because it doesn't stop there. It also goes on to her car payment. Ah. I offered to pay her car payment for her because she said she was having trouble financially. Her job as a waitress wasn't doing very well. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, I'll take care of your car, car payment. How much is it? She told me it was $535 a month. And then when I found all those receipts, I just happened to find her car bill. And it was three ninety-five. dollars oh. She was charging me $135 more than she actually needed. I... All these things, I wanted to tell Arthur and I wanted to be transparent, but it's hard to get a word in edgewise with him sometimes. I don't find that to be the case at all, ma'am. I've actually heard enough uh, of this. And I, I have to say, at this point, ma'am, you have been dishonest. As a result, I'm going to find in favor of the plaintiff to the tune of $3,200. That is my ruling. Thank you, Your Honor. All rise. Judge Ebony has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $3,200. It wasn't about the money or the cleaning or the cooking. It was about trust. I was taught not to lie or cheat or steal, and she did all three to me. And you should have just told me you wanted a maid instead of a wife. It wasn't a maid. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.